I can tell you that in almost 5,000 years of recorded human history, there has never been a nation like America. And I can tell you that I believe with every beat of my heart, every inch of my soul and every ounce of my being that America exists to serve a providential purpose. That is to say that America is an instrument of God, that God has blessed America. From the cornfields of Iowa to the rolling farmland of Ohio, from steamy Louisiana to the snowy wastes of Minnesota, from the Rockies of New Mexico to the spectacular canyons of Nevada, to the gospel music, mint juleps, devoured accents and sultry bells of the South, from the foothills of the Appalachians in North Carolina to the lowland coast of South Carolina, to the glaciers of Montana, to the deserts of Texas. America is a land of matchless beauty, variety, energy, and life. <clears throat> Proudly unique, she stands as the most optimistic, patriotic, individualistic, religious, and libertarian nation in the world, possessing a culture of exceptionalism and success envied the earth over. The two men that we gather here tonight in this ballroom to celebrate recognised and understood that these attributes afforded America a quality that no other nation could or can boast or claim, the quality of indispensability. And so Abraham Lincoln once said, America is the last best hope of man. In 1964, in a televised address to the nation in support of the then Republican presidential candidate Barry Goldwater, the then governor of California, Ronald Reagan, repeated those very words. With these words, these men spoke the uncolored truth with an unimpeachable logic. Sadly, the political, cultural, and intellectual elites of our world have built and developed a new world where truth, logic and common sense are the rarest of commodities. With supreme irony, these elites have successfully feminized our society by imposing a burqa of political correctness, relativism and pluralism to conceal and to suffocate the truth. In this new feminized society, regular, everyday, ordinary people like you and I are emasculated, berated, maligned and ignored, accused of intemperate words, primitive views, limited education and discriminatory prejudices. This is happening the world over. When it comes to the subject of American exceptionalism, the political, cultural and intellectual elites of America who have in recent times blithely abandoned the principles of America's founding profoundly disagree. So too their international counterparts, the international elites. This is the same cabal responsible for plunging Western humanity into the gaping abyss that she finds herself today. Cleverly and surreptitiously, this emboldened choir of elites have entered the classrooms of our children, the lecture halls of our universities, the newsrooms of our towns and our cities, and the bureaucratic departments of our governments. And so these once honourable institutions that were a vestige of liberty and prestige are today replete with indoctrination and the filthy smoke screens of falsehood and ignorance. But ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here tonight in the state that is the greatest embodiment of American exceptionalism and the best reminder of why this world can still be great, we owe it to ourselves to lift this dirty veil. The truth must be spoken and perhaps tonight in a non-American accent and voice, it may hold even greater gravity. I speak unafraid of the consequences 
For when I consider everything that America has done for the world and how much is at stake, a great emotion washes over me. Let the trumpets of truth blare here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The truth is that America is the greatest good in this world. The truth is that the American experiment is the experiment of humanity. The truth is that the United States military is the greatest, most noble and most honourable military that this world has ever seen. Let the trumpets of truth blare, ladies and gentlemen. Were it not for America's presence in the world, a new dark ages would have long ago descended. Europe would be under tyranny, Asia under the control of a single emperor, Australia and New Zealand under Japanese rule, and the people of Eastern Europe would not know of a single freedom that they enjoy today. You see, ladies and gentlemen, America is great because America is good. What sets America apart from the rest are her values, her principles, her goodness, her robust religiosity, her profound Christianity. For America has shown and demonstrated that Christian civilization, when lived out in the lives of individuals and institutions, brings about the greatest degree of liberty, prosperity, creativity, individuality, success, optimism and peace. This is why America has been the dynamic torch of liberty and the citadel upon which dreams of tyranny and oppression dash themselves to pieces. But in order for this torch to shine abroad, it must first shine at home. Three years ago, the unthinkable happened. The elites matriculated in great numbers to the universities of public office and public life. In doing so, they entered your house, the house of freedom, and they started pushing you around. They acted swiftly to position America on the precipice of debt-riddled mediocrity by moving her from the solid ground of her founding to the quicksands of European-style socialism. Almost immediately, the American people responded. And in November last year, the culmination of two years of profuse sweat and immense toil, a flurry of furious punches was landed flush to the chin of those responsible for this brazen attempt. But the job is not finished. The job is not finished. The great empire stumbled and is now gingerly trying to regain her footing. Her fate rests with you. Her fate is in your hands. Are you ready to see America cede her place at the head of democracy's table? Are you ready to see the sun set on American exceptionalism? Are you done? Are you up? Are you finished? Are your legs too weary? These are the questions that are being asked of you. These are the questions that you must ask yourselves. Right now, across this majestic country, there are innumerable patriots with long faces and dispirited hearts that sit slumped, spent in living rooms and around kitchen tables, but you've got to have hope. Man can live 40 days without food, three days without water, eight minutes without air, but not one single solitary second without hope. Ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you. I'll tell you something. You won't be good when you decide not to be bad. You won't excel when you decide not to be mediocre. And you won't win when you decide not to lose. You will be good when you decide to be good. You will excel when you decide to excel and you will win when you decide to win. To strive, to seek, to find and never to yield. That has been your creed. Call on it now. This is your house and no one, no one comes into your house and pushes you around. Unswerving desire, unflinching passion, unwavering commitment, unfaltering energy, untiring zeal, uncommon valour, attitude, aptitude, appetite. That's what's needed now. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that the setback that your country has encountered is nothing but a set up for a comeback. And America is the land of the comeback. 
reach into your hearts and dip into your bodies and extract that American emotion, that American sentimentality, that American patriotism, that American exceptionalism with depositories on every bone. Let the history books record that there was an unprecedented attack on freedom and that to save liberty for the entire world, America first had to win her country back. Let the history books record that the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat, but you did not fall, for you were founded on rock. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your race to win. The will of God will not take you where the grace of God will not protect you. If you do the possible, the Lord will do the impossible. The free people of the world pray with you today and will stand with you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, I need you to know, I want to pour into you. This is the last frontier. America is the last frontier. This is freedom's coliseum. America is freedom's coliseum. Freedom lives or freedom perishes here. The world is protected or the world is crushed here. Hope breathes or hope asphyxiates here. We win or we lose here. We rise or we fall here together. In this battle, you outrun, you outhit, you outhustle, you outblock, you outpass and you win. This is your moment, your time, your hour. Go out there and finish the job. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Nick Adams, everybody.